Well, let's talk to the former British Army commander, Colonel Richard Kemp. Uh, thank you for joining us. I know you're in Jerusalem, uh, Richard. Uh, tell me your reaction to what has happened in the last 24 hours. It's pretty extraordinary, but perhaps not entirely unexpected. I think it was entirely expected. Um, and the very large number of drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles that were fired at Israel uh, intending to cause significant damage to Israeli infrastructure and no doubt to kill Israeli people as well was completely stopped. It was a, it was a major sort of signal attack by Iran which completely failed and it wasn't just from Iran. Also there were projectiles fired from Syria, from Iraq, Lebanon and from uh, Yemen. Uh, all of which, none of which achieved anything. The, the, the damage, the total damage, tragically, was the critical wounding of a young girl and a minor damage to an IDF airbase. So, co collectively, the Israeli air defense systems and the Allied forces, including British uh, aircraft flying to help uh, Israel defend its territory, uh, achieved uh, an extraordinary success. I, I was here in Jerusalem last night and I witnessed overhead here an almost Star Wars-like scene of, of uh, Iranian uh, projectiles coming in across the top of Jerusalem, being knocked out of the sky by Israeli air defense systems. So it, it was a, it was an utter failure by Iran and a, and a significant success by Israel and its allies. Another uh, development in this story, more breaking news, Iran's foreign ministry has summoned the British, French and German ambassadors, according to the Iranian Labour News Agency. Israel and France was uh, involved in patrolling its airspace last night, while the UK sent jets from Cyprus to free up US planes from a joint mission against Islamic State in Iraq and Syria so they could assist Israel. Um, I just want to put a question to you, uh, Richard, from one of our viewers, actually. He said, isn't Iran a thousand miles from Israel? How do they fly drones that far? Uh, he, this person believes there's no way even military drones have that range. I don't understand how this happened. Maybe one of your experts can elucidate. Uh, Richard, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, our drones can fly, fly that far and did fly that. Well, it, actually, most of the drones, in fact, I think all of the drones that flew from Iran and the crews and ballistic missiles did not actually get into Israeli territory before they were knocked down. But they can fly over that sort of range, as can the, the crews and ballistic missiles. We've seen uh, previously that uh, Iran has used proxies like Hamas, like Hezbollah, Houthi rebels, Syrian proxies and so on to attack Israel. Uh, why do you think they've done it themselves this time? Why do you think they've said, look, this is, this is the way things are, we're, we're directly uh, targeting Israel? Well, I think the reason they decided to do it is really t for t twofold. One is because Israel carried out a, uh, an airstrike on the 1st of April against um, Iranian generals, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps generals in Syria on what was described by Iran as diplomatic uh, territory. In other words, part of the diplomatic mission over there. I'm not sure if it was or not, but that's what they said. But irrespective of that, these generals were planning they were taking part in the planning, coordination and um, arming of, uh, of, of Iranian proxies who operate from both Syria and from Lebanon and have been firing missiles into Israel since the 7th of October every day, sometimes a very large number each day. And, and, and they felt, I think, that a direct attack on what they considered Iranian diplomatic premises needed to be answered with an attack directly from Iran. But I think behind that also lies the the fact they felt able to do so. They got numerous warnings from the United States not to do so when it, when they announced they were going to. They ignored those, and they ignored those because they don't have any fear of the US, because the US has been appeasing Iran since the start of President Biden's term in office. Um, and, and, and they reckoned that, you know, there, there'd be no danger from Iran. They've, from, from the US, they fired numerous attacks against US military forces in the region before by their proxies, um, which have had very little response. So this encouraged them. Weakness tends to provoke people like Iran, whereas strength tends to deter, and there was no sign of strength. And, and there is weakness there from the Americans, Richard, isn't there? Because we had Biden asked quite reasonably what his message to uh, Iran was if it was going to attack Israel. He said, don't. But even the President of the United States, of course he would say that, and that's fair enough. But 
even the President of the United States saying, don't do this, there, as you say, there's no real fear there. Just, just expand on that a little bit, if you would, in terms of how you feel the Biden administration has appeased Iran. Just, just paint a picture of that for us, if you would. Well, they have been desperate to get back to President Obama's flawed nuclear deal with Iran. Um, and, and in doing so, they've given Iran everything. They've, they've unfrozen billions of dollars worth of assets, which have been used, among other things, to help um, fund their, their um, terrorist proxy in the region. They've, they've turned a blind eye to the fact that Iran has, has frequently um, broken the terms of, of the nuclear deal that is still in place, despite America having pulled out of it. Um, and, and, and on top of that, they've then, in, certainly in recent weeks, and, and, and indeed in the last few months, Iran, uh, the US has been effectively turning on Israel and, and pressuring Israel to cease its defensive operations against Hamas inside Gaza. Um, and all of these things, plus, uh, plus you know, other longer-term indications like the withdrawal from Afghanistan, um, and like the U.S. failure to properly support Ukraine in its war, all of these things mount up to a show of weakness on the part of President Biden and his administration. How do you think things would change under a Trump uh, administration? Because of course, uh, Donald Trump is ahead in numerous polls. Well, we didn't see. Um, anything like the level of instability around the globe when pr Trump was last president uh, from any country, particularly from Russia and from Iran. And I believe that, um, that, that that is mainly due to Trump's complete unpredictability. No one knows what he's going to do next, including the, the dictators in Iran, Russia and China. So I think that they will be more wary and it may be that they'll try and achieve some of what they want to achieve through violence. Uh, in the months between now and November in, or January in case Trump does get in. But let's not forget, for example, that President Trump ordered the killing of Qasem Soleimani, who was the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, which is responsible for all this violence around the region. Um, and, and that was unexpected. And, and if he can do something like that against many people's advice and fears, then I reckon they'd say he could do pretty much anything. So I think we would probably see a bit, a bit more restraint shown by mm. these uh, bad players uh, under a Trump government. Um, talking about uh, the future, let's talk about today and, and what happens in the next few hours, because I know the IDF is still on alert. Uh, I wonder if you think anything further will happen. Obviously, the UN Security Council is meeting at the request of the Israeli government. G7 leaders are meeting, and also the Israeli War Cabinet is meeting in a couple of hours' time. Um, wh what happens next, Richard? Well, I, uh, my view is that um, the Israelis have no choice whatsoever apart from to carry out a very, very heavy attack in, re in retaliation against this, uh, this operation last night. If, if they don't, if they, if they adhere to what Biden is suggesting, which is take it on the chin, do nothing, then that, again, it's just another sign of weakness. This is a, a, a region that respects strength, not weakness. And it will provoke further similar attacks to Iran whenever it feels like it. Let's not forget as well that in addition to its proxies surrounding Israel and elsewhere in the region, Iran is on the cusp of gaining nuclear capability. And if this sign of aggression directly from Iran firing long-range missiles and drones into Israel, if that is not enough of a warning as to what could occur if Iran does get the nuclear bomb, then I don't know what is. So there has to be a very, in my view, there has to be a very harsh reaction from Israel. A very harsh reaction. Um, obviously, it's up to the it's up to the IDF and the Israeli War Cabinet what they decide to do and when they decide to do it. Mm. But I, as I say, I, I think that you know they certainly shouldn't take any notice of President Trump uh, saying just you know you take this as a win, take it on the chin. I don't think so.